Welcome to another Deaf Head Dice tutorial. This time we're going to build an orc lava. It's actually going to be a basic lava. And as you can see, here's my test model. So I decided after reading on the internet that I need to have lavas in my army. And I won't get into the details why. I've got a little t t tactics uh, video you can watch there. But you may wonder why I'm trying to build them myself. Quite frankly, it's because I need nine of them. And I want to do it as economically as possible. So we'll start off by looking at the materials. And here's the material we're going to be using for this project. Or at least so far, you never know what it might change as we go along. So primarily we're going to be using the, pla the Gale Force 9 Plastic Hard Variety Pack and the Plastic Accessory Pack. These are available online. I picked them up at my at one each at my, one of my local retailers. So um, Plastic Hard basically has nine pieces of, of um, Plastic Hard, uh, varying in thickness from the really thick stuff to really thin, which we'll, we'll be using all of those, as well as the tube accessory, or the plastic accessory, which is a set of big tubes, a set of I-beams and quarter beam, as well as a bunch of small tubes and plastic, uh, thin plastic pieces. So, as well, I have got some cork I'm going to be using, uh, mostly as filler. You won't see this in the actual finished work, but it'll be help uh, provide some support. Grab some coffee sticks from my local coffee establishment, the, the wooden ones as well as some brass rod. So those are the materials we're going to be using. On to the tools. So I start off, I got a couple knives, got an X-Acto knife as well as utility knife. Make sure you've got good sharp new blades. It'll make things so much easier. Just a pin vise with a whatever bit you have handy, a pair of pliers or snips for the brass rod, polystyrene cement, and just some all-purpose utility glue. This is for gluing the wood. You can use white glue or even uh, plastic, or sorry, uh, crazy glue. Whatever you have is, is good. So building the lava. So I've started out by drawing out the um, some of the basic structure onto the card. You can actually grab the my plans off my website at Deaf Head Dice. There'll be a link below in the comment section. So um, and we'll go through each of the sections to begin with. So this is the second thickest piece of card, and it's got the the bottom and the gun shield and the wheels. Now, now the one tool I didn't point out. Um, you don't have to use, I have a compass, and it's got a sharp point, so I'm actually, what I'm doing is I'm scoring the plastic to make it a little bit easier to cut, um, but you can cut this out with a X-Acto knife without any issue. Quick hint, if you don't have one of these, just take a 25 millimeter base, trace around the outside, that'll give you the circle, and then you can just use your X-Acto knife to cut it. So, again, I've scored it, so it makes it a lot easier to be a little more accurate. And again, this is where a good sharp knife comes in really handy because it'll just melt or go through the plastic really easily. And then, uh, actually I didn't put on the tool, a metal, a steel ruler is good too as well. So um, you can use a plastic one, just steel is better if you have it. So, And just cutting out all this. And again, the idea is not to get through it with a plastic card. Don't get through it on the first run. Try to do multiple passes because it'll be much easier. Also, once you've scored it, you can actually just snap it, a lot of this off so it makes it a little bit easier as well. Now, I, the one thing I discovered after filming all this is the uh, the lighting I have in my camera around my area um, really makes the white hard to see at times and, and bleaches out a lot of the detail. So I apologize about that. That's going to be a trend. I tried to adjust it when I realized it, but uh, for what we're doing here, it should be okay. And I'm going to look for improvements in the next video. So at this point, we've got the bottom and the gun shield done. Now this is the thickest piece of card, and this one I used the heavier knife because it was relatively thick. I think it's like 0 0.06 inch or 1.5 millimeters, so it's really relatively thick. And this is going to be the brackets for the cannon itself. So the the longer piece is the the vertical, and the the smaller pieces are going to be the horizontal, like the actual mounting on the the floor. And I did this as well. I scored the top piece and just basically was able to break it off. And this again, where a sharp knife comes in handy because you wouldn't doing this with a dull knife; it's going to take you forever. And you also be careful where pieces go flying off. So this is the corner beam, and the nice thing about this set from Gale Force or Gale Force is that it uh, makes it so much easy to make them. So this quarter piece is actually going to hold; uh, it'll go on the end of the plate, as we see there, and it's going to hold our um, our tube, which is where the brass rod is going to go through, where the axle is going to go through. So. Um, the rod I found was a little bit harder to cut through, so again, I probably could have used the utility knife. But So what we have here now is the base with that corner piece, which is also going to hold the gun shield as well, as you can see there. And then the axle is going to go through. So right now we've got over half of it done. So got an I-beam, 
and uh, I did this one I think it was about two centimeters and so what this is going to work is this is going to be the back of the um, the back of the the lava it's going to be the the piece that basically the trailer hitch for for pulling the the thing around although you never see orcs pull this stuff around I'm sure maybe it's a grot that has to drag it by hand so but it also gives a uh, it adds a bit of a aesthetics to it so what I've done is I've cut five millimeters in on the one piece and just shaving off the top part of the I-beam now filming I've discovered doing this while filming always adds a bit of a challenge to get the right angle and I, in the end I wasn't able to get on the camera but by cleaning that little piece off, that allows us to glue it to the bottom of the base. So now we're into the guns. I don't have the m measurements for this because um, they didn't provide them on the Galforce site. But just this is the biggest tube, and I measured about 15 millimeters, which I guess is just three quarters of an inch. And uh, and then take actually that was the second biggest tube, and now this is the biggest tube. So what I'm going to do is basically, and you can do the same thing, you can tear it off. You can sand these as well, I mean, but I'm going to a basic approach, so I'm not really doing any of the fancy stuff. So what you do is you put the smaller tube into the bigger tube, and you get yourself a nice cannony looking piece. And again, you can sand that down and clean it up as much as you want. Now, because you don't want to open on both ends, I'm taking a piece of the thinnest, or second thinnest card, uh, the, the .515 inch, cutting out a square, and just gluing the bottom onto that corner, or onto that piece. The thing I found with the, the polystyrene cement really acts really quickly, much faster than it does on the Games Workshop stuff. So once it's dried, just clean off the excess pieces. So round it out so it actually looks like the gun has a bottom. And then I just took an X-Acto knife, and very careful with this, especially if you're using a sharp knife. Just be as careful as you can. Once you get all the excess little bits off, you can just take a little bit of sandpaper to it and, and clean it up. I just took a little bit of the, uh, the sandpaper I had handy for my old model car days. Now, the pin vise, I'll draw uh, a hole. Again, you can do this as, a lot of this is freeform. Um, so you can just draw the, uh, for the, where the, the brass rod's going to go in, and then do the same thing on the, um, the structure. These are the thick pieces that we did. So, and you'll see where these all go together. So we're going to get a little bit of brass rod. I've drilled too many holes in my green mat, so I'm a little more cautious. So you take the, the one piece, put in the gun, put the other piece on, and just sort of wiggle the brass rod where it needs to be. And it's okay to have a little bit on each side, and you'll see why I have a little, little neat way of covering up the, the excess brass rod so you don't have to get it completely flush. Using the snips to get it close to the right size. And so basically now you've got your cannon. So now we can start assembling the base. So again, the polystyrene cement using the base and then the L-beam. And you want to have it overlap a little bit off the edge because you want to make sure there's enough room for that gun shield. And you want to get it as as, parallel, as close to parallel to the, the base as possible because you don't want a crooked shield. Although with orcs, it really doesn't matter. That's the nice thing about starting. If you're doing this is your first scratch build project, doing it with orcs is so much more forgiving than doing it with anything else. So you can learn all your mistakes on orcs and then go go transfer to whatever else you're going to do. So now you're putting the, uh, the tube in there, and that's going to give you, again, for the axle for the wheels. And then lastly, and that's, uh, and I was actually kind of surprised how good that looked with very little effort. And then lastly, just on the on this uh, other side, you're going to glue on the I beam, and then glue, put the glue in the area where you carved out the the two little top pieces. And there you go. So you've got your uh, your trailer hitch or your trailer piece for the back of the uh, the base. So right now we're I'd say about 50% done. So gluing on the cannon. So you're going to glue on the bottom of the supports. And here you want to get it as close to center as you can and as flush to that L piece as possible. And so once you've got that down, it's kind of hard to see with the uh, the lighting, but you want it as flush as possible to that, that uh, L beam. And if you have to center it a little bit, that's fine. And then to give the illusion that it's one piece, you on the bottom of the supports, you're just going to take one of the smaller pieces and make it uh, flush so it looks like it's an actual makes it look like an L piece when it's not really just adds to the orkiness of it 
I find picking up the pieces with just stabbing with the exacto knife made it a lot easier than trying to fiddle with it with my fingers. So, so next we're on to the gun shield. Now we're gonna work this up a little bit. So this is the the th second thinnest stuff, and actually I think this is the thinnest stuff. So I'm just cutting out some pieces to add it. I'm not adding plans for this because a lot of this is just whatever looks good to you. So I just cut out some strips to make it look uh, a little more orky. It didn't get them quite right the first time. Um, so I winded up, uh, I shaved them down. Now for the little crosses, all you have to do here is just draw, um, just cut them out diagonally like I'm doing here. Just quick, it adds the uh, the diagonals or the, the, the spikes and it makes a big deal. Now I laid it out separately so you can see what it's going to look like. So I've got six little teeth. It almost looks like a face, but when it's on the gun shield it doesn't quite look as good as that. So, so to glue it, just put, lay down some glue, drop it in. Don't have to be doesn't have to be perfectly aligned. I find it looks better if it isn't. This one I tried to uh, didn't quite get it right where I wanted, but I'm okay. And then now to put down the the spikes. Now I found you can't put the glue down for the entire thing all at once because the this plastic card seemed to really absorb it right away. So I find I have to do two or three things at a time, not all at once. Okay, so next I'm going to cut out a basically like a kick plate or a, a plate for on top um, f to fit on top so I, there so I can put some rivets and such in there as well. So just lay it all out. I cleaned up the piece. It was a little big to begin with, but I just cleaned it up off camera. And again, it doesn't have to be straight. I haven't used, I don't think I was using my uh, my steel roller for any of this stuff because, well, it's orc. Orcs don't do anything straight. On to rivets. Now, I'll warn you, rivets can be a little bit frustrating. I've got the smallest and the second smallest uh, plastic rods. And the idea is you want to cut them as thin as possible. Like, and I think the, um, a, a lot of stuff I've read, you want to do it like half a millimeter, which is tiny. They go flying, that's why I put my uh, my hand over it. And basically, once you've got the rods you want, the, the rivets you want, just drop a bit of the glue and just pick them up and, and put them in place. So they look really good when they're done, but man, they're a lot of work and, and can be a little bit frustrating and tedious at times. So I'll warn you, the end result's worth it, but it is a bit of a, a pain at times. So just a drop of glue, and you can clean it up a little bit, or, or if you're not, not sure they're going to stay in place, you can uh, drop a bit of glue on it afterwards. Now, as much of a pain the bigger rivets are, the smaller ones are even more so. So here I've had some go flying all over the place and uh, not getting the same size, getting consistency. I think after I've done this a while, I'll, I'll get a little bit better at it. But the small ones definitely uh, definitely help as well. So so again, I just put um, a couple dots of glue and and move on to the next, uh, next ones. So I put rivets all along that bottom piece as well as one in each of the center of the... Um, of the teeth as well. Yeah, you can see the uh, I've got three different light light sources when I'm recording. I, any combination of three, I wasn't able to get this faded out. I think that's why you don't see a lot of people working with white plastic card in tutorials because it's so hard to see. So, any lighting suggestions out there? Please, by all means, feel free to throw a comment below. I'm uh, I was finding this a little frustrating when I was editing, so. And now we're putting the, the gun together. So at this point, just uh, get it to the, the length that you're happy with. I tried. I had about a five millimeter difference between, and the glue will will set that up. So now we're onto the wheels. Now I went for sort of a retro orky look with the the wood. These coffee sticks you can pick up at like Starbucks or your local store, or whatever they have. Um, just cut them to, to relatively shape. Now they are if you line all four of them up as close as they'll go there is a little bit of an overlap so you get a little bit of space so I actually had to put a tiny little bit of space here and I found this was probably the most fiddly bit because the uh, the wood didn't always stay where you wanted it to so I'm using my all-purpose glue um, which after it dries is fantastic so um, but you when you're trying to line all four of them up at the same time they shift around and such which so it was a bit of a pain And it takes a this at least this glue took about uh, about 20 minutes to dry enough to be able to uh, to start working on it again. And you could use you could have used the cork. I actually didn't use the cork at all. I was originally going to use the cork between two pieces of plastic to make nice wide wheels, but I opted for the wood instead. So so once you leave that aside to dry and be patient and don't be like me and wait don't wait long enough. But so basically here you just want to take the again a sharp knife makes this so much easier. Um, you just go in. Now I got tried to impatient, tried to peel it off that way, but I found it wasn't as good as just actually going through with it on the table. 
and pushing through. So it takes a little bit once you get there. Just get all the excess off of there, and then you're gonna go and clean that up. Now you can sand this as well. I didn't include any of the sanding I did just because I. I don't think it makes for an exciting tutorial, but you can go in and sand this stuff because you want this as, as flush as possible for the next step. So now what I've done is I measured the distance of the, or the diameter of the wheel, not the diameter, the outer area of the wheel, which worked out to be just under 8 millimeters. And I cut it about just wide enough so it'll cover the wood and the, uh, the original plastic piece. Now as a hint here, just to help um, to make it a little bit easier to apply. I do wrap it around uh, uh, an X-Acto knife without the blade um, just to give it that uh, to give that rounded effect to begin with so you're not fighting with that at the same time as fighting with trying to get the glue on. So nice heavy even coat. Now I find I got glue all over my fingers for this but because of the nature of this glue it peels right off both the uh, the model and your fingers. So so this I found again was to be the one of the trickiest bits. So you basically line the line along the outer ridge and if you're like me you'll wind up sitting for about 15-20 minutes just holding those two end pieces in place. If you use crazy glue it could be a little bit faster but I wanted to use that other glue. So now I'm just uh, doing free form uh, pieces to, these are basically going to be metal pieces or I, I envision holding the wood together. Cut out three but decided you know what two is enough. So again just a little bit more of the all-purpose glue. So it's covering all four pieces of the wood. And the same on the other side. And then back to rivets. So I basically put a ri one rivet on each pieces, of, uh, or each over top each of the wood planks. The idea that the, the piece is being held in place that way. Next up, this is what I mentioned before about covering up the brass rod. This is a, I think the second, or th I think this is the smallest rod that actually was hollow. You gotta be careful of shooting pieces when you're cutting with an exacto knife. And so what I've done is I've cut them really thin, maybe about a millimeter or two, and put them over top of the brass rod. So it basically hires the, hides the brass rod, and giving that effect that there's uh, bigger stuff in play there. So I put that over top of the the gun cannon or the the lava piece, um, the the brass rod there, and we'll do the same once I get the uh, the wheels in place. So a piece of brass brass rod. Just snip off the excess, and then make sure you got it the way you want, and then just glue on the uh, little pieces on the end. Now I've discovered that I did, wasn't quite happy with the uh, the placement of the gun shield. I had it up to a little bit too high, so I just ripped it off and put it back on again, a little bit lower, and that way the gun can move over the shield a little bit. And that brings us to the end of the basic tutorial or a basic lava tutorial. So this is the final piece looks like. Um, looks much better at steels than it does as the uh, as on the film. As you can see the uh, the rivets really help bring it out. I didn't show the uh, the one wheel there but it's following the same techniques. The back piece I mean really this in if I were to do this without filming it, this would take me about 15, probably about half an hour to do. So I should be able to get the nine that I need done, although I want to do a, an advanced tutorial, and that's actually what we'll talk about here. So I'm going to do an advanced tutorial where it has a little more detail, add a little more f fun bits to it. Um, I'm also going to do a painting tutorial where I'll, I'll paint these, and you can see how I painted it in the uh, the shot in the opening. So the the links aren't available yet, but just uh, click on them every now and then, or check, uh, subscribe to our feed, our channel, and then when the new ones come out, you'll see them and you won't miss them. Um, also, we have other videos, so uh, other tutorials, battle reports, etc. Click on those if you want. And thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions or suggestions or comments, feel free to com uh, throw them in the section below. Um, I do respond to them uh, eventually. And uh, once again, thank you very much for watching, and stay tuned for part two soon.